Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm really, yeah, from the Tori YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. Our family is your family, your family is our family. And we are the family <clears throat> that is trying to seek the kingdom. We are the family that is looking desperately to find the ways of our creator and to find his ways and to find the, the ways that our creator has said that he wants us to walk and the ways that he wants us to live, the way he wants us to worship. And we've never found any other ways that it identifies anywhere in this world except in scriptures, specifically in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those first five books those are what people call as the Torah. Anything outside of those first five books is, well, I mean, if you take it and it's not in scriptures, well, you're, you're breaking commandments because we have commandments that tell us strictly and, and forbid us to, to adding to or taking away from the Torah. And so if we want to understand what the heart, mind, soul of our creator is and how he wishes us to be his people, then that's how he gave us the instruction guide. And so many of us have forsaken this instruction guide. So many of us have forgotten that there, you know, we aren't our own God. We, you know, we, we've grown up in religions that have us thinking that we can go into a little box and a little guy inside of a box and tell us we're forgiven for our sins. We're in religions where we go and we worship on the wrong day. Everything with religion is contrary to what is in the Bible, into the 66 book Bible. <clears throat> in the Bible, it tells us very clearly that the people of our creator are the people that keep his laws, statutes, and commands. There's no other place in that. And so if you want to hook your star to that wagon, if you want to be a part of that crew, the Shamaim crew, the heaven crew, Yaz crew, and, um, you know, it's, it's not like we're riding alone. It's not like we, we have no guidance. We, we have a Messiah. Our Messiah, his name is, is as you probably call him, Jesus the Christ. Uh, there was no J's in Hebrew. There's, his name is Yahushua, which, which, which means salvation, which means Yah saves. And so... Our creator sent his son to walk that Torah that we should be living perfectly. And he is going to be our king. He's going to be the Melchizedek priest, the one who is reigning in Mount Zion in the New Jerusalem when it comes. And so we will not be alone. We have a leadership. We have a wonderful creator. Our creator has given us life. And so because of this, we believe that we should choose to follow our creator. And we hope that you guys out there do as well. And we are in deep into the books of the writings of Abraham. And um, gentlemen, can you give me a quick recap of where we're at? We're in chapter 50 today. Give me a quick recap of where we are to get to this particular point. So after we uh, have Abraham, uh, he goes back to genealogies and talks about his forefathers, how Noah and how he looked different than the rest, how uh, he uh, built an ark to save his family, how he perceived or he preserved the seed of Cain through Ham. Ham was the half brother to Shem and Japheth, and um, he had generations. Each, each had generations of children, and now we have uh, King Nimrod, who is a uh, son of Cush, which is the grandson of Cain, and he is ruling a la land of um, Cush. And uh, he is a, a bad dude. He's a very bad person. He, <coughs> he thought he killed Abraham as a baby. Abraham got away, went and uh, learned and grew up with Noah and Shem. He learned the ways of Yahuwah, learned the Torah, learned how to be a holy person. He came back like 39 years later and um, started uh, breaking his father's idols. And uh, then he, his dad, Tarak, turned him into um, Nimrod and said he's breaking out idols. And then he, um, Nimrod found out, he's like, wasn't this the baby I was supposed to kill? And um, <coughs> Tarak then blames his, uh, his oldest son, which had nothing to do with it, and he gets thrown into the fire. And he dies as well. But Abraham lives through this, and then Nimrod wants to learn from him how he is so powerful. Right. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. And um, the writings of Abraham is actually available. It will be posted very soon. It's available on Amazon. Um, every book that you get from Yah's scriptures helps get prisoner scriptures in. And um, as we are probably about four months away from having these this book in our hands... We we're asking that anybody that wants a hard copy of this scriptures that you get a pre-order in right now. Right now, um, we we are putting these out for fifty nine dollars. It's a large print, hundred and three book version of this, and it has all of these books and beyond, and they're all the restored names that are in there. 
Now, I believe the price of these are going to be going up. I believe they're going to go into the $60 range once we get a few more details on them. But everybody who gets them at the $59 range, you will keep that. It's, it's going to be the same price. We're not going to change that. And we hope that you guys will grab these scriptures and that you will pass these scriptures out to people because these are the very best translation of scriptures that you'll ever find anywhere. And it is um, it has a great prison ministry along with it that we are attempting to take care of prisoners where the prisoners have never, ever been taken care of before in a way such as this. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go, guys. Chapter 50. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. Now, among the believers were Lot, the son of Haran, and Haran's daughters, Milka and Sarai. Now, this is, I'll give you guys a little quick warning. This is, um, we're, this isn't the, as bad as the, the writings of Solomon or anything of the sort, but we're about to get some descriptions that are a little interesting. So, um, let's continue on. Milka was fair, but Sarai was beautiful above all women. Her face was as that of a messenger filled with light. Her cheeks as two roses in full bloom. Her hair as spun gold, which men treasure above all. Her eyes as pools of blue, reflecting the glory of Elohim's sky. Her nose, delicate and lovely. And her countenance truly was fair as the sun. All right, so do these guys give back a, uh, a, a good report of a beautiful woman? Or, or? I think so. Okay, <clears throat> let's continue on. I, I, <clears throat> yeah. Her breasts, like two mountains rising above the plain of Shinar, were fair to behold, and her complexion truly like the clouds in purity. Her arms were comely, her hands perfect and delightful to behold, always in the service of those in need and quick to hasten to the service of Yahuwah, her Elohim. Her palms were lovely, unmarred by her constant labor, her fingers long and slender. Her feet were comely and always set in the path of truth. All right, gentlemen. You know Abraham wrote this for sure. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, this is, this is probably his description of his wife. Probably, for sure. Um, eight. Here we go. Her thighs were, her thighs were well-rounded and soft, yet never failing to sustain her in her, in her labor of love in behalf of the servants of Elohim. This is just when Abraham writing here. It, it had to be Abraham who wrote this. If he, nobody it, else wrote this, he wrote this small portion right here. This was his own words. Well, he did say this is the writings of Abraham. So <laughs> here we are. Truly, as Abraham says, truly no maiden was fairer than Sarai, the daughter of Haran, for her beauty was greater than all other women, and she excelled them all. But with her beauty was great wisdom and perfect faith in Yahuwah, and constant service in behalf of the saints. For her hands never ceased from Baraka, the people of Elohim. Wherefore, my brother Nacor took Milcah, the daughter of Haran, to wife. But I, Abram, took Sarai at the direction of Yahuwah, and I found great joy in her. But behold, Satan was not content to have me continue to disrupt his reign in peace. Therefore, he sent a dream unto sovereign Nimrod, in which the sovereign did see that I should be the destruction of himself and of his reign. Moreover, it was shown the household in his dream that three of his own household, even Zeptah, Lilith, and Nefriti, daughters of Onitah, the son of Nimrod, who were virgins, had joined the believers of the Most High Elohim. When the sovereign awoke from his sleep, he was angry, and he caused that I, with these three virgins, Zeptah, Lilith, and Nefriti, should be seized and bound and carried to Potiphar's hill at the head of the plain of Olishim, to be sacrificed unto the mighty one of Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzram. And these three virgins did the priest of Pharaoh offer up on the altar, as, and they died, singing praises to Yahuwah and bearing witness to the truth. Wherefore, they shall be Baruch forever, for they have entered into the rest of Yahuwah. So I take it they did not get a hold of Abraham. They, hold on. 52. And when these virgins were slain, the priest of Pharaoh took me also and laid me upon the altar to slay me. But I cried unto Yahuwah, my Elohim, for I knew that my mission was not yet ended. And Yahuwah heard my voice and sent his messenger to loose the cords wherewith I was bound. And I saw Yahuwah seated upon his throne. And he said to me, Abram, Abram, behold, my name is Yahuwah. And I have heard thee and have come down to deliver thee and take thee away from thy father's house and from all thy kindred into a land which is unknown to thee, a land which I have promised unto Noah, which should be an eternal inheritance unto the promised seed. Behold, I will lead thee by my hand and will put upon thee my name and thou shalt bear the kahuna of the fathers and the power thereof. Do you have something, Jade? Mm. 
Oh, I thought you looked up like you had like the thought of like this great thought. No, no. All right. Five. And it was as and as it was with Noah, so it shall be with thee and through thy ministry and the ministry of thy seed bearing this kahuna. My name shall be known in the earth forever, for I am thy Elohim. And Yahuwah broke down the altar of the idol of the idol mighty ones by an earthquake and smote their priests that they were all destroyed. <clears throat> but I hastened to my father's house where all the believers were gathered, fasting and praying for me. And I said unto them, Up, for this day we shall depart from the city that Yahuwah may visit it in wrath and vengeance. Wherefore, all the believers gathered together and followed me out of the city to my camp. And we struck our tents and departed from the land of Shinar to go to the city of Shalom to confer with Father Shem. And my father also, seeing that the sovereign's face would be set against him, gathered together his goods and followed after me. We journeyed slowly, for I had with me many souls, both women and children, and women with children. So this would be an odd thing, right? You would have to think that you would be at odds with your dad. Your dad just about had you killed. I mean, he threw your brother in the fire, and then he, threw, he just he killed had you your in the brother, fire. had you killed, and then all of a sudden he's like, well, you know, maybe I should um, he's eat just doing, these he, lambs. He's just out for himself at this point, just trying to protect himself because he knows your mother's a little mad about this. So. Yeah, it's coming, coming. Okay, 54. When at length we arrived at the city of Shalom, Father Shem came forth to greet us, bearing bread and wine, which he barak, and gave us and said unto me, Baruch art thou, Abraham. For the Most High Elohim hath multiplied thee, and behold, thy seed shall be even as the sand upon the seashore without number. Did he go over the name change yet? No. Did you call him Abraham now? Did he call him now? He just called him Abram. I don't think I said Abraham. Did I say Abraham? I think you did. Did I? Yeah. Oh, okay, it's Abram. No name change. Two. <clears throat> go now with this great multitude into the land of Canaan. For unto thee and thy seed will I give this land for an everlasting inheritance, said Yahuwah, Elohim Almighty. Amen. Thus we departed from the presence of Shem and moved to the vicinity of Ludor, which city we denominated Quran. And we dwelt in the suburbs of Quran for three years, for there was much pasture there and a space large enough for the multitude which accompanied me. <clears throat> and I preached the Besora of Quran, and many souls were added unto the faithful in that place. Isn't that your egg incubator? No, that's the inverter. That's the inverter? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. You hear her beeping in the background. <clears throat> we have eggs in the incubator. We are trying to raise up some babies. And so I couldn't figure out what that was, but that was actually a different solar inverter. So sorry, guys. Here we go. 56. And there was a famine in the land, but the land of Quran was Barak for our sakes, that the famine there was light. But at the end of three years, the famine abated throughout the land. Wherefore, Lot, my brother's son, and I went before Yahuwah in prayer after the manner of the ancients. And in manner to our prayer, Yahuwah appeared unto me and said, Arise, Abraham, and take Lot with thee, and all who follow after thee. For I have purposed to take thee out of Quran, and to make of thee a minister to bear my name in a strange land, which I will give unto thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession, when they hearken to my voice. Imagine being told by Yah that you're just going to get like a plot of land, you're getting your own inheritance, you're getting your own thing, and it's gonna, you're going to be the owner of it. Like There's like... No people, there's no papers. Like, you just get the creator of the land to say, hey, this is your inheritance. You own it. Right, absolutely. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, so um, it would be crazy hearing that from Yah, hearing that um, he would uh, talk to people directly, and that, uh, yeah, anything else? You want to have anything? Um, no, not really. I mean, just I think this is the point where he tells him in, you know, in regular scriptures, we get... Uh, Abraham talks, he talks to you, he goes, get out of the land of here and go to the land where I'm going to give you your inheritance. I think this is the story, except we don't really we get to hear why he tells him to leave. He just tells him also to leave, but now we know that he was out to be killed by Nimrod, so he's like, leave this land. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, three. For I am Yahuwah, thy Elohim. I dwell in the Shemaim. The earth is my footstool, for I shall surely walk upon it when I come to redeem my people from their sins. My name is Yahuwah. <clears throat> and I know the end from the beginning. Therefore, my hand shall be over thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will barak thee above measure, and make thy name great among all nations. And thou shalt be a baraka unto thy seed after thee, that in their hands they shall bear this ministry and kahuna, even the kahuna of the fathers, after the Kadesh order of Elohim, unto all nations. Now, what is the kahuna? Kahuna is the priesthood. So basically, he tells them. That he <clears throat> give him the priest, and out of his <clears throat> generations we had the Levites, which were the priests. So his all his uh, generations were priests. Yep. Okay. Six, and I will brock them, 
even as many as shall receive this besorah through my name. For they shall be called after thy name, even the seed of Abram, as though they were the seed of thy own flesh. And they shall rise up and barak thee as their father. For I will barak them who barak thee, and curse them who curse thee. In thee, through the kahuna, which thou bearest, and in thy seed, through thy kahuna, which they shall bear, which cometh down from thy fathers, shall all the families of the earth be baruch, with the biraka of the besora, which are the baraka of deliverance, even of eternal Kai. For I give thee this promise, that thy seed shall sprinkle all nations, that through them the right to this kahuna may encompass all mankind, that all may be brought into the covenant through obedience to the Torah and ordinances of the Besorah. Okay, so I think we should stop there and we should discuss that last verse right there. So, because this is, a, this is something that is for everybody that is out there. For I give thee this promise that thy seed shall sprinkle all nations that through them the right to this kahuna may encompass all mankind. <clears throat> all mankind, right? Mm -hmm. That the priesthood may encompass all mankind. That all may be brought into the covenant. Where does it say? Through my son dying on the cross and you can get rid of the Torah? Is that mm -hmm. what it says? No. It's brought into the covenant through what? obedience the to the Torah and ordinances of the Besorah. So guys, salvation is a two-way street. It is a, it is a Messiah along with keeping the law, statutes and commandments. And if you don't believe me, simply read Matthew seven and just read it very, very slowly. When Messiah says that if you are lawless, you will be told to depart from him, you will be told to go to hell. He essentially says, "Kick rocks." And another thing you see here is that the Torah is for all mankind. It wasn't just for Abraham's people. It wasn't for Shem's people. It wasn't just for the Jews. Just, yeah, it's just not it for the Jews. the Jews. It's for everyone. The Torah is for all mankind. Anybody who will accept it will can be part of the part of the Yahoo's people. Yeah, and so anybody that wants to be in covenant with our Creator, you can be in covenant with our Creator. It's a choice. It's a way of life. It isn't a decision that you make and you don't walk through it, it is a life change. It is something that you decide you're going to hook your star to Yah's wagon and you're going to walk with him and talk with him and be his people and he will be your Elohim. But you need to begin with keeping commandments. You need to begin with keeping his Torah. And his Torah is found no other places than in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So with that, everybody, we will... Bid you guys farewell. We hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, it is the first, uh, second day, right? Monday? Yeah. I guess everybody's out there in the workforce today, I hope, unfortunately. So have a good day. Have a good week, everybody. We love you all very much, and we are out. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.